What's up everybody, this is Paul from Boosted Films, and in this video we're going to cover all the details I can about an EVO 8 and 9 fuel tank, not only going over a little bit about the install, but a lot about the detailed parts you may need, part numbers, and also comparing a JDM fuel tank versus a US market fuel tank. But let's start this video off by covering a few commonly asked questions. Number one, why would I run a JDM fuel tank in a US market car? Well, the simple answer here is availability. Currently, the US market fuel tanks are discontinued and no longer being produced. However, you can still buy a JDM tank brand new. However, I will say if you're in the US and have access to a good US fuel tank, just use a US fuel tank versus trying to swap to a JDM. Okay, so does the JDM 8 or 9 tank bolt right up to a US market 8 or 9? The short answer here is yes, I have verified this. The JDM tank will bolt right up. It fits pretty much the same in a US market Evo 8. That's the car I used, and I assume it would be the same for an Evo 9. However, the JDM tank does have differences, such as a smaller hose for the fuel fill vent, and the JDM tank is also missing a spot to bolt in your fuel temperature sensor. More on this later. So where can I buy the JDM Evo 89 fuel tank and how much does it cost? Well, as of recording this video, uh, the two places I know you can get this OEM JDM tank are ears.ie, which is a place in Ireland, or rosssport.com. It will cost you roughly 550 to probably $750, depending on where you live and where you buy from. Will all the components from the US tank transfer to the JDM tank? The short answer here again is yes. But keep in mind, you can't transfer the fuel temperature sensor since the JDM tank does not have a place to mount it. And again, that fuel fill breather hose is smaller on the JDM tank, so you're going to have to work around that a bit. So, can I run my EVO without this fuel temp sensor, since this JDM tank doesn't have a place to mount it? Um, the answer here really is, uh, it's up to you to decide. I'm hesitant to answer. Uh, of course, you know, in the affirmative here, I'll just say I did the swap and my car seems to run fine so far. It's been a short period of time. Um, it's been about two weeks since I've done this fuel tank swap, and yeah, it runs fine without the fuel temp sensor um, in my US market Evo 8 running a JDM tank. Will you have a check engine light? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, you would need to change things to not have that check engine light display. So, of course, do anything in this video at your own risk. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes only and only showing you what I did uh, because it was fun to do. And finally, is changing a fuel tank on an Evo an easy thing to do? No, don't do it. <laughs> now, let's jump into all the details. So here we are with the fuel tank out of the car. That's just gonna work easiest for this part of the video where I show you all the components uh, pretty much that connect to a fuel tank. So first thing we're gonna do is actually start with the sending unit that's on more of the passenger side of the car. And I'm gonna go through and break down each of these sections kind of that you see in the square boxes right now. And of course you can pause the video when I have all this stuff up on the screen showing part numbers and descriptions. And with the image that you see on the screen, I'm basically gonna work from left to right as the video goes along. So we're gonna start with uh, this sending unit that's on the passenger side of the vehicle that's in green right now. Then uh, after we go over those components and I show you actual video of the actual parts, um, and then uh, we'll continue to part 13, which is the main fuel pump hanger. And then we'll move on to part three, uh, that square box, which is the fuel fill information. So as you're seeing on the screen, this full unit is discontinued. You cannot buy just this unit. However, you can buy uh, the gasket and the filter and I believe still the vapor sensor. So for all these screens, the numbers in the brackets will correspond to the number on the image on the right. So number 18 in the brackets, that full unit, that's the part number for that full unit, whereas number 19 points to that gasket, that's the part number for that gasket. And on the same slide, just because this is where I'm starting out, these are some general part numbers on the bottom that you might need that didn't really fit into any other spots within this video. So uh, the US fuel tank is designated the US fuel tank, and honestly, every other part in this is basically uh, considered a US market part number, unless it has JDM next to it, such as fuel tank JDM 1700A026. 
And the OEM nuts part number is basically the part number that will work for almost every nut that bolts something down on this fuel tank. It does come back as like a fog lamp nut or something when you order them, if you're ordering from an OEM Mitsubishi site. But just so you're aware, that is the part number for those. Now to give you a look at the real thing, this is my brand new JDM tank. Uh, this part num number that I'm showing right now, the thumbs down, I don't, somehow that gasket comes up as the gasket you need for this side. I have no idea what that gasket is for. Don't get that one, get the one on the screen right now that I'm showing you, the MB400461. If you need, replace the gasket for this fuel sending unit on the passenger side. So again, I could not buy a new one, so I did not. This is the rusty used uh, US market one out of my old US market tank. And I did, of course, do kind of a test fit first with all these components before I actually put them in. Again, keeping everything clean. You don't wanna get anything into your new or even used tank that you're reinstalling. So I'm trying to keep it clean of debris um, before I change out this gasket. And then this also little, this little filter uh, basket, gasket thing I'm gonna change out as well. So that's what I'm showing here is this little filter basket. This has two little clips that kind of push it in place. You just should be able to squeeze the clips that it that hold it in place and then it should pull out and uh, then you should be able to put your new one in. I don't think it matters what direction it goes in, but there's this little circle on the top and that went more towards the inside um, of the whole unit here. So as you can see the circle I'm pointing at now, that went kind of to the inside center of the whole unit. Next, I'm going to change this gasket. This old gasket is going to come out. You should be able to uh, pull that free and then put in your new gasket. There is a little bit of a trick to this new gasket as far as making it work easier once it's in. But as you can see, I just got it started hand tight and then I used a needle nose pliers to pull it in snug. So once it's bolted down, uh, I will show you this trick for the gasket to make things a little easier. But before I do that, I'm just gonna throw this diagram on the screen. This is a pretty good diagram showing all the components of this side. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need to see it. I just thought it was worth including here um, before we moved on to the next area. And again, one trick here, it's, it's pretty simple, but this gasket that pulls through, these kind of protrude up right in front of where you'd plug in this plug-in. Uh, so just cut off a little piece of that rubber after you pull it through, and that'll just make it easier to plug in and get this plug-in plugged in after you get the fuel tank reinstalled. Next, we're actually gonna move on to this uh, safety valve. So this, um, you probably won't have to touch, honestly. I don't think you'll have to do this. I did it just because I kind of wanted to dive into everything. Uh, and I did want to make sure it didn't leak, of course, because this is right at the top of the fuel tank. So you, you really couldn't get to it uh, very easily, I don't think, without dropping the tank. And as far as my understanding, what this does is I believe it kind of lets any pressure out from, from the tank when it's right side up. Uh, but then it's also designed to hold the fuel in if it was flipped upside down. So if your car rolled over, this is this valve is designed to close off so fuel wouldn't continually spill out of your fuel tank. So if you do have the owner's manual, it shows you how to test this. I don't think you need to, but you can if you want to. Um, you can test to make sure that it would not leak fuel when it's upside down, basically by filling it with water and pretending it's fuel and making sure it wouldn't spill out. Uh, again, the main reason I changed mine is I just, my old one was so rusty and the gasket was so bad. I just wanted to make sure it was good. So pretty simple procedures here, just the three nuts uh, that you would take off and then you should be able to reconnect your old hose. Um, if not, you're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper. I didn't get super deep into this part as to where it connects, but for the most part, uh, you know, I would, would am pretty comfortable saying it's just kind of a, a breather hose uh, that this is running to, but it will run to your EVAP uh, canister. Next, we're gonna move on to the whole fuel pump hanger side, and this is more so on the driver's side of the car. And there are a whole mess of part numbers here for you, a whole bunch of uh, reference points that you can, can look at. Uh, if we run down the list here, it's number 13 is listed twice, as you may see. The Evo 8 and the Evo 9s have different part numbers for whatever reason, but from the research I've done, I think they are exactly the same or would be interchangeable. So if you had one, the other should work. Uh, there's probably some very minor differences that, that wouldn't matter is my best guess. Again, with this whole video, these are all my best guesses. I make mistakes. I make typos. I am not uh, anything other than a certified YouTube mechanic, so don't trust me. 
Uh, but anyway, moving through the rest of the components um, here, you can buy just the holder itself. That's what number 14 is. Um, and that's honestly more likely than what you would end up buying, uh, I'm guessing, if you had some sort of issue. Uh, because the full unit is actually really expensive. And that's part of the reason why, like number 15 here, the fuel pump, I just say wall bro, because don't spend the money that it would cost to get a new OEM fuel pump. I certainly really wouldn't recommend that, but just my opinion again. And then going down to the bottom of the list here, a couple things uh, I want to point out that for some reason it doesn't actually show me or point, give me a number to the gasket for this side, but there is a rubber O-ring gasket I've pointed out in this list as well. And then the mounting plate, you can get that brand new uh, also that holds this fuel pump assembly down in place to the tank. You can get that brand new. And there are actually three total quick connect hoses, but I could only find part numbers for two of them. And I'm not entirely sure which ones are which, but doing the best I can here. But those are the quick connect hoses. We'll touch on those a little bit later as well. Here's another diagram from the service manual. Just thought it would be helpful to include here. Feel free to pause the video if you need it. Uh, note number four in this, that little spacer, especially if you get a wall roll, you might need a, a thicker spacer. Make sure that fuel pump is nice and snug in there with that number three clip holding it in place if you are changing out your fuel pump. So here we go. We're back to the JDM tank. I had already done a test fitment on this. And then what I was deciding to do here was actually change out just that fuel uh, filter uh, that is on this fuel pump. This is the Warblo pump that was already in here, a 255 in my case. Uh, so I bought a new fuel filter and I just popped that on and put that in place. Again, this rubber piece, that's important. Make sure that's in there. Um, you don't want that fuel pump pushing out of the housing if, after building up too much pressure the first time or whatever time it builds up too much pressure. So you want to make sure your fuel pump is in there um, like it should be. And there's a couple things to make sure of with that. And one of those items is that little rubber piece at the bottom and also the rubber grommet on the top that pushes in. Not shown here, but just worth mentioning. And of course, the rubber gasket we also mentioned in that parts list. I don't think you'll have hardly ever changed this either. Um, but again, I wanted to verify which part it was when I was doing this process. So I went ahead and purchased one and swapped it out. And just showing you what this looks like uh, for a reference point. If you want to see what this OEM piece looks like with mine, of course, mine is the fuel pump. It does have a Walbro 255 pump installed here. And again, side by side, just bringing up that diagram so you can uh, reference what everything looks like um, with this piece if you're trying to put something together. So now we're going to go ahead and install this. This can be a bit trickier in the car, but it can be done in the car if for whatever reason all you're doing is actually changing your fuel pump in your car. And I shouldn't say for whatever reason because that's what most people are doing, but maybe not why they're watching this video. Um, but you can. It's a little tricky to get it in, but you can certainly do that. With this ring, note the three tangs that I just pointed to, and then also note this one little divot within that ring. There's a spot where that should line up on the tank because these studs are not you know, evenly spaced. So this ring will basically only fit one way. And the key to knowing what way it will face is that little notch out of the ring that you saw. And once that notch is lined up, you should be able to bolt in your uh, fuel pump hanger housing. Typical to a wheel, I try to do a star pattern, work from one side to the other when tightening down just to not tighten it unevenly. It's probably a little less crucial here than, than a wheel, but that's just what I like to do. Next, we got this uh, transition hose, if you will. I do not have a part number for this. I'm not sure what it's called. If you don't have one, I feel sorry for you. I hope you can find one. Um, but from what I gather, this hose basically transfers or siphons fuel from one side of the pump to the other. Uh, that's my best guess. But these are quick connect lines. They should just plug in uh, to um, to push on. And another diagram here just to show you that hose that we just put on. What you're looking at on the left side of the screen, the bottom part is basically what's on the passenger side. Uh, so it's considered the suction hose portion there that's a little bit angled in the bottom part of this picture. That's the left side, passenger side, where it connects. And then if you look at the top of this photo, that's that main hanger that we actually just uh, showed installing in this video. And again, the connection one on there is actually, again, suction hose. So you can kind of barely see, but it's right next to that harness connector. So that part is a piece we've already reinstalled, basically that suction hose where it goes from one end of the tank to the other. 
And next we're going to move on to these hard lines that basically go to the front part of the tank, the driver's side front part of the tank. Uh, good luck finding these again if you don't have them. Um, hopefully you can. Looking at this piece here, again, I'm going to bring up a diagram to show you that the one that's curved, the one that actually looks more like an L, is number 9 on this diagram currently on the screen. And that's the one that would run from your fuel pump um, itself to the top part of the hard line. And then switching to, if you look now more towards number 11 in the next diagram here, that is the other hose that was on that hard line that you just saw. That one connects from that one end of the hard line to the fuel line on the car itself, the fuel line that runs uh, from the back of the car towards the front. All right, and now we're going to move into the fill tube area. This area can be um, a little bit tricky in most parts here again are discontinued but there are a couple things I learned through this process that I would like to differentiate especially when it comes from US market uh, to JDM market and also you'll note here that the stuff in green that you know is highlighted is there's more than that shown so if you look at uh, number four for example is just the gasket uh, shown just to the right of the green that's the part number for that gasket and uh, the check valve number 12 we're going to show video specifically about that in just a second and something i want to note is basically that number three that box that green stuff that's outlined in this um, image on the screen that's not actually the full you know tube but that's like the full hard part of the tube the like metal steel part um, and that only connects to kind of the faded number 10 and 11 in the same diagram those are the rubber uh, portions of the fill tube so if you were just trying to totally rebuild this car from scratch and needed parts uh, you couldn't just order number three that wouldn't give you everything you needed you need would need the 11 and 10 pieces as well to finish that connection from the fill tube itself to the fuel tank and we're going to dive into a bit more about the JDM stuff um, JDM versus USDM in that fill tube area uh, as well as we continue on so first that check valve, this is the US rusty US market tank with the check valve that I popped out hoping I could just swap it over to the JDM tank. It does not quite fit, it's a little bit bigger and I guess the reason that is from the research I did with a little help from people uh, that reached out to me, it appears that the check valve on the JDM tank is actually more built into the fill tube itself versus being mounted right onto the tank like this. So you can see that it doesn't fit here in the JDM tank. I don't think it's an issue really worth worrying about too much, um, but honestly my fill tube is kind of leaking anyway, so I might try to switch to the JDM fill tube um, and see if that'll work for me, and that should have the built-in check valve. But hopefully for you, if you're just doing this, you don't have to worry about it at all. Um, I will say again, just for transparency purposes, right now I'm running mine without the check valve and it seems totally fine. However, I do want to change it out to the JDM fill tube that has a check valve if it will work. Next, we're moving on to what I think is a breather, basically, for the fill tube. And I'm, I'm putting a hose on this section right now. This is one area where it looks a lot different from the US market tank to the JDM tank. But for the most part, uh, the only difference is that this hose, you know, is actually a little bit smaller. Um, of course, that US market tank kind of had this thing where you bolt it on this tube for whatever reason. I guess maybe there's something else different within there that I don't know about. Um, so again, anything that uh, you do in this video, do it at your own risk. But the main thing I had to do here to make this work for the JDM tank was uh, change the fuel hole size a little bit. It basically has to transition from a half inch to five eighths inch. Um, you maybe could sneak away with just taking that five eighths inch, you know, using that OEM hose and just sticking it on there and then tightening it up. It, you know, if you were putting a JDM tank in, it would certainly be a little bit looser. But if it is, if this really does just have air passing through it with very limited amounts of fuel, I don't think it would be much of an issue, but of course, safety wise, you always need to be cautious about what you're doing with fuel in general, especially with a car and stuff like that. So I think I did a little bit overkill on this. I spent a little extra time using only fuel holes. I did, you know, the transition to try to get this hose to go from that half inch to five ace and make sure that it would work appropriately. 
And now I'm just going to go under the car to show you this is where it's tough to get to. This is the fuel fill hose. And I'm pointing to where the rubber part meets, uh, you know, the metal part. And this rubber piece kind of transitions through up above this cross member that helps hold your rear end in place. So this is where the fill hose goes. And then kind of that, what I assume is a breather hose right next to it. So I did my best uh, to recreate this. I believe my overall length was about 11 inches total. Wherever you do that transition point is kind of up to you if you do need to create this. But again, I have all that information on the screen. Feel free to pause the screen uh, to take a look at what you would need or what I used uh, to create this same hose if that's what you wanna do. And I will say I erred on the side of caution and actually made it too long at first because you know you can always, always cut more off uh, versus add to it. However, I will say I, I couldn't unfortunately actually cut more off without kind of dropping the tank again. So I did end up putting the tank in place and realizing this setup was about three inches too long, the one you're seeing on the screen now. Um, so I ended up cutting off, I believe about three inches. Again, total, it was close to 11 inches, uh, I'm guessing. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to remember. Um, but that's what I ended up doing. Um, as you see on the screen, you can see the fitting uh, coupler adapter that I used, uh, the fuel hose that I used, and uh, basically it ended up being about four inches of that um, thicker um, hose, four inches of five ace hose, and then about seven inches of that quarter inch hose. So if you're making that, good luck. Hopefully that is helpful. And one final shot uh, showing the installed um, new hose that I had made. This is where it connects again to that hard line part of uh, that vent. And then you can see here where that transition is and then where the hose pops out. And again, this is before I cut it off. So I cut off about three inches um, from what this looks like. And that's it. That's the comparison of what I believe is all the components. Hopefully I hit all the components that you're interested in, um, but that is pretty much everything about doing the components uh, for either tank, the JDM or the US tank. So now we'll move on to some tips for dropping the tank and reinstalling it. This job, uh, which I've said before and I'll say it again, is one of the worst jobs I think that you can do on an Evo. Changing the fuel tank is just awful. It's a pain. You, you cannot drop the fuel tank basically without removing uh, part of the lower subframe that holds your uh, rear differential in place. And we'll get more into that later in the video, but just saying that right up front, this is one of the worst jobs. And I went into it <laughs> with that with that mindset. I was like, this is gonna be awful. And it still was awful. Usually if you try to set yourself up and say, this is gonna be really bad, sometimes it's not as bad. But And of course, when you're doing something like this, one of the first things you wanna do is disconnect your positive battery terminal. Make sure you're not gonna potentially arc anything. So just disconnect your positive battery terminal before you're doing any big job on your car. And now we're underneath the car and yet yeah, you can see it's pretty rusty and there's a lot of stuff we have to remove. We end up, you know, removing our drive shaft. We're going to remove our exhaust. Uh, but yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what the fuel tank looks like underneath the car before we start dropping anything out. And the first thing I did was remove this midsection of my exhaust. Eventually, I actually ended up removing the rear uh, actual muffler, the rear portion of the exhaust as well. I utilize that on my uh, drive shaft bolts, the four drive shaft bolts that hold it in uh, to the rear diff. And then of course I just unbolted the four nuts that hold that drive shaft in place and removed my drive shaft. Uh, right now I'm on the passenger side of the car just showing a little bit of where things go. Uh, the the e-brake cables on both sides of these can actually end up being a pain. Uh, so just a heads up on that. When you're dropping your tank, the e-brake cables kind of typically kind of get in the way. And there are four bolts. There are not like gas tank straps that hold your gas tank in place. There are just four studs with bolts going to them, um, or I should say nuts. So there are four nuts that hold your fuel tank in place. So I basically started working on those first, uh, making sure I could get them free without having them break. Of course, I did not want to break those studs since they're basically attached to the chassis of the car. So I took my time heated them up very cautiously of course because anytime you're around fuel you got to be careful with um, heat or flames and another reason i like having this magnetic heat induction tool is it doesn't create any flames it's just kind of heating up a very specific area next i am showing uh, this is the trickiest one right here this is the driver's side rear of the tank this is really the one that kind of it seems to be the most pinched and one of the main reasons you cannot actually drop your fuel tank 
just by releasing these nuts and taking these nuts off because these studs are long enough and the part of the fuel tank pinch uh, where it pinches together is just it won't come out and I'm going to show you that a little bit better uh, soon as well. So now I'm just on the passenger side removing that bolt or that nut again I should say and getting that one loose as well. So I did try, I really did try to actually get this without removing or lowering that uh, piece, that subframe piece that holds the rear diff in, and it's it's really not possible. So next I just lowered the car down and then uh, took a look at what we could see from inside the car, our fuel uh, pump assembly units, and I removed all the lines here. If you are actually dropping your tank, you don't actually have to remove the lines quite yet, uh, at least at this spot. Realistically, what you need to do here is end up unplugging anything electrical because uh, you don't, that's a connection there that you're going to have to unplug when you're dropping your tank. But then the actual spot where you need to disconnect your fuel uh, pressure hose and your fuel return line, that's actually on the driver's side of the car, underneath, um, underneath the car on the driver's side. So luckily, again, I got most of this uh, free and out without braking. That's another thing that's amazing to me with this whole job in a way that I've, I've done so far. It actually went fairly well as far as how things could have gone uh, with as rusty as things are and with things potentially breaking. It went fairly well and honestly it still took me six hours to drop this fuel tank. And here we are on the driver's side of the car. Yep, we're just removing the fuel pump assembly stuff. Again, I did not have to unplug these lines here. I could have left them plugged in if I was just dropping the tank, but I just removed them anyway. Honestly, I kind of forgot that I didn't have to remove them yet, but they would have had to come loose eventually either way since I'm swapping everything over. So back up into the air we go. And as I mentioned, what you really do need to disconnect is this area that I'm going to show here. This is on the driver's side. I know it's a little hard to reference where this is, but this is the driver's side front of the fuel tank. And uh, this is where the lines connect that go from your fuel pump sending unit, uh, basically to the hard lines of your car that run up front. So these are the lines you for sure will have to disconnect to drop your fuel tank. And of course, sped up footage. And as I mentioned, this took me about six hours uh, to do because of the combination of rusty bolts and taking my time and just trying to see how I could get this out. But uh, yeah, just the, you know, I was playing with this, trying to loosen up different bolts, trying to do different things to get this fuel tank to drop out. But now I'm actually gonna go in and show you specifically why this tank cannot drop out without removing uh, the, the portion that holds the rear diff in. So this is the driver's side rear of the tank. And as you can see, I'm pointing to, there's a piece of the tank that's basically pinched above this bar, this aluminum bar that holds the rear diff in. A piece of the gas tank is basically stuck between that stud. You know, I'm gonna show you on this new tank here. This, this piece is in between you know, that stud and that bar that holds the rear diff in. So this gas tank, this fuel tank is not coming out until you lower that bar enough to get that pinched part of the fuel tank um, underneath basically uh, that stud. And one other huge pain uh, with this job is actually the fuel fill part. Um, as you can see here, uh, again, thumbs up, rustiest evil in the world. Uh, it runs this way up to the tank and now I cut ahead to where I dropped the tank a bit and you can see in this side part where that connects. Now, the way I actually ended up getting to it is by dropping the tank in the front as much as I could and then basically yeah, I'm shining a flashlight in right here where you can see and then I stuck my hand up in there and used some uh, sockets extensions and uh, ended up basically breaking uh, that clamp that holds that on and then spending a good half hour trying to get that hose free because it's very hard to actually get in there to get your hand on it to pull it free. But now we've cut ahead to where I actually lowered down my rear diff. I didn't actually have to remove it, lower the rear diff from this bar, but I don't know, I did that anyway. Uh, but the, the bar that holds the rear diff in, that's what you need to lower down. So we've cut to the gas tank actually removed from the car. And here you can see uh, that that bar is actually a little bit you know, lower drop down from uh, the chassis of the car. And that's what you have to do uh, to, to basically get your fuel tank out. And there are, there's the bigger nut I'm pointing to now. There's a bracket, um, um, that support bracket that kind of goes there, and then one bolt uh, that goes in as well. So that same setup is on the other side uh, too. So basically you're gonna have to remove 
at least on uh, those two bolts on each side and then that one nut on each side and then you should be able to lower down that um, part that holds in your rear diff and then you can get your fuel tank out hopefully but that is why this is one of the worst jobs i mean it's it's tough and especially without a hoist i do not recommend trying this if you do not have access to a hoist doing this on the ground is is awful ask me how i know so now we cut back uh, the fuel tank is still in the car and this is actually on the passenger side um, but i'm just showing you again basically the rear part of the fuel tank and how it's stuck with that bar and how it's not going to be able to come out unless we lower this down and now I am running through trying to get this to clear the tank. The front of the tank needs to clear the e-brake stuff. And that's just, I don't even have good advice for that right now. Just other than that's something you need to watch for when you're dropping your fuel tank. Those stupid e-brake uh, cables are kind of right in the way. So you have to try to get those around your fuel lines. Actually, what I ended up doing, since I did remove the fuel lines from the top of the tank or release them from where they connect to that fuel pump housing, I think what I ended up doing is basically removing that whole piece and it was honestly so rusty it was coming loose anyway on a bracket that held it to the tank that I kind of removed that whole piece to get it around the actual um, e-brake cable. And I'll leave a lot of this footage in just to show you guys that it takes a long time. I spent a long time. As you can tell now, it's actually got quite a bit darker. I've spent a lot of time doing this. There's actually a lot of stuff I didn't end up filming because it was just me like messing around that I knew wasn't worth filming. So a lot of time involved in this project, especially if your car is as rusty as mine. But we did finally reach that point. Luckily, with a little help from my dad, it was good to have another person there to help out. Um, we did get the tank dropped. Uh, one final thing I had to do was disconnect. Uh, there was um, an electrical line, a wire that runs just in front of the passenger side of the tank. I had to make sure that kind of was out of the way. And that's actually just another tight spot when you're putting the fuel tank in. Didn't show it as well here. Electrical uh, harness, basically. Had to get that out of the way and make sure it wouldn't damage it while I drop the fuel tank. But success, the fuel tank is finally out. That's one of the biggest reliefs, getting this stupid thing out of the car. It's, it's awful. So there is that bar that holds your rear uh, diff in place. And again, you're gonna have to loosen that up and lower your rear, rear diff uh, to get your fuel tank in or to remove it. So we're just doing that here. And here's just a quick walk over of the tank as it was before I was going to lift it up in place. And of course, what the car looks like. You can see that rear uh, diff is hanging down a little bit. At least that top bar that's uh, holding it in place is down basically a quarter inch or a little bit more. Because it's uh, you need to get it in where those studs are sticking out uh, to get it up in place. And the one thing that's nice about having a brand new tank is it's like completely empty. Uh, these tanks do have drains on them as well, but uh, this made it lighter and a bit easier to actually put in place being that it was brand new and completely empty. So the first thing I try to do is get it in uh, basically where the rear uh, part mounts to this tank and I get those in place. Of course, you got to watch for the wiring harness in front. You also have to watch for your e-brake cables in front. Those items kind of make this job extra tricky. But the trickiest part of all this, I think, is really reconnecting that actual fuel fill hose. And of course, that new hose recreated that, that vent hose as well. So what I ended up doing is basically getting that back uh, part in place. Uh, those two back uh, bolts, I should say, where this mounts up, uh, the studs that it goes through. I got the tank hung up there. So basically, it would tilt down towards the front of the car. And then you end up having to kind of make yourself make your arms long get some long extensions um, it, and then you got to reach up in there to try to basically get those hoses tight get those clamps on and get those you know hoses tight i feel like it's worth mentioning now and i usually try to mention in, in most of my videos you know this you got to be careful when you're doing this stuff i certainly recommend you take it to a professional <laughs> if uh, this is something you're thinking about doing um, if anything else hopefully after watching my video you're like yeah i don't want to do this so take it to someone uh, take it to the shop that'll do it for you if um you're not comfortable with it or you know of course just do anything in this video at your own risk i am simply showing uh, what i did and what worked for me so again here we are above the tank and uh, and i could not really show you know me actually doing this it's hard enough to do it myself let alone film while doing it 
but I was able to get those uh, hoses connected and then tighten up those clamps. This next bit is a little bit tricky as well. There's these two hard lines that go on the driver's side front of the tank. Those kind of run up uh, to that fuel uh, pump assembly itself and then connect to where the lines run towards the back of the car. So this is another item that uh, I don't you know, have specific how-to on, unfortunately, as far as uh, what order you want to do it in and uh, you I just know you kind of have to be trick have to watch for your e-brake cable and other uh, brake lines in my case stuff like that uh, so it can be tricky you may have to just take your time if you're trying to do this and um, you know of course make sure you're not crimping anything or making anything like get pinched off but we did have to reconnect those lines to the car and then we lowered the car down and then went back inside the car to connect a few more items. Right now we're on the passenger side uh, just reconnecting this item here, tightening it back down and of course attaching all the lines. Uh, that one was just a transition line, should have already been attached. Some of the other plugins I did while I was actually lifting the tank in place when I could see them. And now we're on the driver's side. Uh, this is basically the main side where you would be like changing your fuel pump or anything. So we're going to uh, plug in uh, the plug-in that goes there and attach our feed line and our return line as well. Another spot where, as I'm remembering as I did this, is just in here you kind of want to watch uh, for your um, like wiring harness. You want to make sure that wiring harness isn't really pinched uh, between the tank and the body of the car when you're lifting the, the tank up in place. So as you can tell, it was a long job. It took me some time, and now it's getting dark out already. Uh, but uh, just tightening up all the bolts uh, to hold this in place. And then I didn't bother filming, uh, you know, the fun stuff uh, because it was so dark and everything. But, you know, I had to reinstall everything. Put your drive shaft back in. Put, you know, the exhaust back in. Tighten up your rear diff. Um, all of those fun things. But this is it. And that is about it for this video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did find it helpful. And hopefully we can all work together to make this stuff a little easier for everyone. So if I missed anything, if I did anything wrong, as always, please let me know because all these internet people are very smart. Leave your comment in the comment section down below. Tell me what I did wrong or give me more details. I know I wasn't the most detailed when it came to the install, especially. So if you have specific tips for installing an Evo fuel tank, please feel free to share them. And as always, check the video description. If there is any major updates to this, I will try to make them in the video description. I cannot really easily update the video itself or any specific areas. So if I had a typo on the screen, wrong part number or something like that, um, I can't e fix it super easily. So check the video description for any potential updates there. So of course I hope you enjoyed this entertaining video about me fixing my Evo and working on it. Uh, I certainly appreciate everyone watching and as always this is Paul from Boosted Films. We'll see you next time.